we want to do we want to move on to your up uh, your to your new fanboydom or do we want to skip over to google the apple co-founder approves aston kutcher as jobs what here's a link for it this is uh from marquee blog is this an april fool's joke probably if it was done on April for, I, yeah, that's that's one of the reasons the no, the notes are really light. I didn't want to put any April Fool's jokes yeah, in here, and we had a lot of them. This is April third, two thousand one. The reaction. Can't be an April Fool's joke. Yeah, the reaction to Ashley Kutcher landing the role of Steve Jobs in the upcoming indie about a late visionary's early life and the founding of Apple ranged from confused, so it's comedy, to displeased. The zombie Steve Jobs won't let this happen. To hopeful, Kutcher is just nuts and to be a good match for the role. So apparently, Steve Wozniak, Apple co-founder, is approving of Ashton Kutcher to, to play Steve Jobs. <laughs> I cannot believe they're going to make a Jobs movie. Oh, I knew that was coming. Oh, but... uh, yeah. But they're going to remake the RoboCop now. That's been... Uh, everything uh, is being remade because everything good was written in the 80s. Yeah, well, didn't you hear? We're in the 80s 2.0. Actually, I think they're making, they're probably, uh, they're not remaking it, but they're gonna, I think they're going to make a contemporary version of it. Like, you know, like, like a continuation on Back to the Future. Uh, how do you make a continue? well, what, are you going to say where Doc went in the end of the, in the, of the thing? Actually, it won't have my, it, from what I understand, it won't have my, uh, the, the main characters anymore. That's so what, it's going to be Jules and Vern? I don't know, something about the time machine going to a new family. And, and basically the only thing that gets moved is the time machine, but the characters are going to still do what they do off screen. Oh, yo, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. The DeLorean was destroyed in Back to the Future 3, so the only way the time machine can get loose is if you buy the premise from the video games of they cloned it with the lightning bolt and it went to both the future and the past. Wait a minute, the last one had a train type machine. Apparently, he made another machine. He made yeah, machine. he made the train, but, I mean, well, how does the train get loose? Well, I, I think it's... I don't know. <laughs> well, I think it's just the time machine that gets loose. Okay, this, this, do you know if it's the train or the DeLorean that gets loose? I think it's the DeLorean. Oh, God! That means they're going... You don't know this. They made a Back to the Future video game in which the... You remember in the end of Back to the Future 2 it got struck by lightning and it was like short-circuiting between the 1800s and 2015? The premise of the video game was when it got struck by lightning it had enough power going through it that it went both places. So Doc and one copy of the DeLorean went back to the Old West and a copy of the DeLorean went to the future. Um, so apparently there's another DeLorean out there, and that's what the premise of the video games was. Because we destroyed the original. <laughs> but, Actually, I think they're just going to say that he invented two DeLoreans. And, uh, oh, that's even worse. <laughs> That, 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 that's even worse, this. That's even worse. Yeah, the problem is we don't have the genius writing of the 80s, so we just butcher them. In the end. You know, that's butchering a classic right there, because then no, it's... No, I'd say, you'd say butchering a classic, but this is a, a movie that technically is a continuation, so it can't... Oh, see what happens. The original. Let's see what happens. Well, the original's probably the new Total Recall, the new RoboCop, oh, and the new no, Lethal Weapon. I mean, RoboCop and Lethal Weapon, Dirty Harry, and... Lethal Weapon? Lethal Weapon went all the way up to, what, Lethal Weapon 4, which is... Yeah, crazy. if they make another Lethal Weapon... Uh, they can't make Die Hard. I mean, we're supposed to do a Die Hard 5 right here, so... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah they are. He wants to do two more on Die Hard. Oh, they, did you hear they want to make an Indiana Jones 5, and Harrison Ford actually wants to do it? Oh, that might be all right. I mean, I liked the last one. It was pretty cool. Well, it won't have Shia LaBeouf, because Shia LaBeouf basically told Spielberg to F off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hearing all this 
little quibbles that go on between directors and actors and other quibbles. Well, well then, what happened was is that you remember Transformers 2 and how bad yes. it was? Yes. Well, Shadow and Buff basically came up with an article saying, or at least someone who I interviewed him said. That, as for what? He said, basically, Transformers 2 was a piece of crap, and he didn't let make his role in, in the Indiana, the last Indiana Jones film. He, he hated it. So there, I guess. That, that didn't, I, I'm sorry, I can't buy uh, Mr. Even Stevens' Indiana Jones' kid. It just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. He says he's gone off to, uh, I guess, do independent films and try to get his self-respect back. Cause that'll work well for him. Uh, who are we talking about at this point? I thought we were talking... Who, who, who are we discussing? Spielberg? Uh, no, Buff. Tell a little Buff. Oh. Was in the uh, Transformers 2 and the last Indiana Jones film. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna always think of him as that stupid kid from the Disney crap. So he pissed off. Uh, Spielberg. Apparently. Yeah, he said I he said the role sucked. Cares. I, I you know I don't think the next Indian movie. Uh, what do I know? You keep up with Hollywood more than I. I Michael Bay, man, I was wrong. But I know that chick did. What was her name? Oh yeah, no, she really. That's why she wasn't in the third movie. No. Yeah, she called Michael Bay Hitler, and then Michael Bay defended her, and then and Steven Spielberg yelled at both of them. Why'd she call Michael Bay Hitler? I don't know. I have no idea. I, I not in her mind enough to understand why she did that. But she was pretty much kicked off and fired. When did this become whatever the heck that reality show Fox does? <laughs> Where they talk about all the Hollywood people's problems? <laughs> when did we turn into that? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, everybody listening to the podcast, my say It wasn't really much of a segue. I, I kept it Apple, but you, you, that led to other things. So. <laughs> well, that is, that there, there is a reason. Microsoft. Yeah, there's a reason we're called Babel. Yes. <laughs> yes, but getting back to technology and something relevant, Microsoft. Right. Um, uh, I, you know, that's... Hey, listening, uh, Rush and I did a great show on YouTube uh, where we just go through lots of things on Windows 8, and you can see it. And actually, the entire, and the, the entire Windows 8 experience you're, you're seeing is actually a Windows to go version that I had running on my USB drive and I installed Skype and everything else so it was, I thought it was pretty cool to do that. Yeah and he yeah. learned that you can actually screen cash from Skype. I cannot believe you didn't know you could <laughs> do that. Oh, look I'm not the best at everything. Uh, I never <laughs> I, I Skype to like talk to you. Well I don't, I don't I only use Skype to talk with you guys. Uh, okay. Okay. And now Microsoft owns Skype. Yeah. Moving on to Windows 8 and comments. Um, going down to, we probably want to start with about the third paragraph here. Uh, maybe the end of the second paragraph. Which one? Tell me what it starts with. Um, the one that starts in this scenario, Microsoft is seeking to serve two markets. Windows 8, which runs on multiple device types. Yeah, which is something we all agree is a good approach properly executed. We disagree on whether or not the way Microsoft's going about it is a good approach. Um, I agree in one aspect of what this article is saying. The primary rubs against Windows 8 are um, it's not really good for business. Uh, you disagree. You think it's good now. Well, wait a minute. Look. It's because, it's because, look, I, and I could be wrong on this, I'm just saying the step they took from developer preview to consumer preview was extraordinarily drastic. So I'm, I'm assuming that by the time there's the least, the same amount of margin, the same percent of, it, of change is, is, is to come. And like I, I said, I will wait till we see what's actually on the show. I'm giving Microsoft the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, and I'm not. <laughs> right. 
They, if they, if I, they, if they want to prove me wrong, prove me wrong. But uh, based on what I'm seeing so far, I'm like, you're not there yet. Yeah, but you, it's definitely changed from our early shows on YouTube. Yeah, and they agree with your point of view on the iPad. The iPad will only get you so much. Windows 8 won't have those limitations. Yeah, see, and the thing of it is is that, is that I understand Apple wants to separate the two, but iCloud is not sufficient to link the two. No. Uh, because then you're going to really have to allow third-party everything to bridge, essentially. Which is not the Apple way. Right. Uh, and now, what this brings in here, and it, it, this is one of the important reasons I stuck this article in because it really does say what we've been tiptoeing around in all our Windows 8 discussions perfectly, which is the idea, they get the idea of the unified thing, but the number one complaint a lot of users have is they would like the ability for their desktop traditional keyboard and mouse system to separate out Metro if they want to which is not an option I'm seeing going to happen. Uh, I would disagree with them. I know they want it, and that's a lot of UI calls, but I would say, look, we're going to eventually get past this, and we're only prolonging the inevitable. Yeah, yeah, well, no, and like I said, for Microsoft to push the Metro agenda, they kind of have to draw the line in the sand and say, fuck you, you're going here. I get that, uh, and I'm, uh, on, that's not what I'm hunting them on. But the other thing they say here, and this is the point on which we disagree because you're giving them the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, they got a lot of catch up to do. And that is, uh, in the next paragraph there, the it is perhaps telling uh, that almost no readers reported any plans to roll out in a, you know, in a corporate. And, and the thing here is, I think this pretty much states what Microsoft needs to do to do it. If they don't come 100% when they launch Windows 8 on the shelf, I think they need to do exactly what's suggested in this article, which is say, Windows 8 is for average users. Business, don't worry anything about Vista 7 being dropped. We're going to continue on and we're going to figure something to do for y'all in the next versions of Windows that addresses all your things. Just skip this one. However... I have a statement. Windows 7 was Microsoft's gift to enterprise. It's very solid and functional. It is. I, I was... Even though it was a... It's... A, uh, a repair from their last little... Yeah, well, it, it, Windows 7 is Windows Vista 2.0. We know it, that. This, this, but Vista actually was a good system. It's just it had... It had to receive the blame for all of Microsoft's. What's a good word? It, 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 if Vista had not gotten such a bad mind share, I am convinced Windows 7 would have just been a new service pack for Vista, but they had to say, Vista's gone, here's 7. <laughs> yeah, but, but we don't like Microsoft to radically change as they've, jumped, they've jumped code bases so often in the past. Oh, I know. So I think it's a good thing, um, and I and I I I really like Windows Seven. I, it's on all. It's on actually every Windows machine that I own is Windows Seven now. I don't even program for XP anymore. So I mean, and if I have to, I still use Windows Seven, and you know. Uh, but Windows Seven is it. I, I think one of them, one of my computers, it's turned is off on the corner is Vista. But if I were to use it, it'd be Windows Seven. So. I, I'm, I like Windows 7. I, it's, it's, it's kind of kind of like saying Windows 7 is my new Windows NT4. And to give a brief history on that, is I was... Uh, no, no, let's be honest, Bit. Windows 8 is your new NT4 because you have you know, gone I, Metro. I, I just like the direction that Windows is going with it because I really like the tiles and navigation and, and all the time I've spent with it, even using it programming and databases and all that other crap. But what I'm saying is, is, is in terms of what my NT4, the reason why I was on NT4 is that I, I left being a hardcore Apple user in the mid 90s, early 90s to go to NT because of the direction of NT. NT was supposed to be a workstation, operating system, run on risk, open GL, the whole thing. And then that all got butchered to shit. But um, I, I, I was appreciating Microsoft's vision and just became a Windows NT4 fanboy after Windows NT351 and uh, ran and used workstation and server from 1996 up until 2003 
um, because I just couldn't stand everything else in between Microsoft. And in 2003, I had to convert some of my workstations to XP just from programmable problems and things like that. But servers were still in T4 up until um, uh, one of them in 2003, and then now I like sort of pretty solid. But that's my Windows NT4 thing, and I loved how you could customize it. The device manager didn't exist on it, and I liked that because it, it essentially you had to make, you made it like the hardware in a very different way, and it didn't cause problems and driver issues and all that sort of stuff. And, and I very much liked that environment with Windows NT4. Uh, so Windows 7 is now my, my new Windows NT4, and I have the same faith in Windows 7 as I did in Windows NT4. So, uh, okay, we have an unintentional pun in this article, getting back to the article. Dwight, from an office, not the office, but his name's Dwight and he works in an office. <laughs> um, uh, you know, he makes the point that I'm, you know, making. I know you like the Metro UI, but he's like, you know, he sums it up. The Metro UI is completely unfamiliar and for us would be a support nightmare. And that really is the problem. It me, but I guarantee you, that's a discovery issue. And once users learn it, I find it actually more intuitive. It's kind of like what we were discussing. Uh, Remember how we were discussing how uh, so many businesses... It's, it's a chicken and egg so thing, I, bit. It's a chicken and egg thing. I don't see it being rolled out in business. And if it isn't rolled out in business, people at home... I don't think it's going to be rolled out in business because there's no need to spend the money to. I mean, Windows 7 is a solid system. In other words, they had to get off XP, but then now they're, uh, many businesses are just getting off XP to go into Windows 7. I don't see the financial need to go to Windows 8. Not because it's terrible or a UI change. It's just pragmatically I'm a business. Windows 7 is solid. It's got all the latest software already on it. Really recent, you know, compared to if I was on XP, let's say last year. I'm not going to go and roll out Windows 8. Why? It's, you know, unless there's something enticing that, uh, an app that is just solely Metro-based that's going to save my business money, I'm not going to be uh, switching to Windows 8 uh, as a business. It, it just wouldn't make sense to me unless there was something there. Now, when Windows 7 gets old, and whatnot, okay, then I gotta look for an upgrade. But you know how many businesses have just recently gone to Windows 7 from XP? I don't see them making the jump to Windows 8. And, not, and that's the sad thing is that all these articles are missing tension and that they're missing the pro. They're not gonna go to Windows 8 because of, of that. They're gonna go to the Windows, they're not gonna go to Windows 8 because of the very reasons I just stated. It just, business is slow. Do you know how many businesses I go to? I, I know, Bit, but here's the thing. It, it, for Microsoft to make this push forward, they've got to get everybody on Metro. They will eventually, but they already know that's not going to happen. It's not going to get rolled out of business, not, not because it's a bad UI or bad operating system. And, well, and that right there is exactly the argument for the Metro should be able to be detached so that... No, no let consumers. Consumers don't need to have it detached. Quite the opposite. Consumers who want, who can, like those users that are always laugh at, like, uh, uh, the, 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 that, oh, I just formatted my computer, you know, because to me it's extremely, you know, I, these are my work uh, instruments. I, 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 in other words, I have a lot to lose, <laughs> versus other users that can just simply say, yep, I'm formatting, putting on an arrest. Uh, the, for consumers, they're going to they're gonna go for it. But business, no. They're, they're, they, in a couple of generations of software, they, they probably will, but not, not, when, not in this rollout. It just doesn't make sense to go from what is it? Windows 7, Windows 8, and not for the stipulated year. Oh, okay. Uh, this, this, anything to say? I don't think they're going to go in the business sector for a long time. And I hate Metro. <laughs> By the way, on the, on the podcast, this is an article from Windows IT Pro. And it was written April 3rd, and the title is Readers Speak Out on Windows 8. Pretty good article, so go ahead and Google that, ding it, whatever. Uh, uh, alternatively, you can go to youtube.com slash the show that sucks, spelled S-U-X, and it will be in the show notes there. We have got to get the site up <laughs> so people can just go to the website. So this is project. I was just also going to say is I also hate the uh, what Apple's doing with their interface, trying to make it look more like iOS. Yeah, 
and I and I have to admit, I hate what Ubuntu is doing with the whole Unity crap. I mean, it's uh, on all fronts. It's how can we screw up the UI? It's 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 like the mission statement of the industry. How can we screw it up and make it do less? <laughs> well, to me, it's more like uh, not really. On how can we screw up the uh, uh, screw up the uh, interface? It's like. How can we come up with a desktop that nobody can develop for, and there'll just be no applications or programs coming out for it at all? Are you just speaking of Windows 8 or, or what? It's just—it's more like they're trying to make uh, the, uh, the user experience, you know, so simplified. You know, press the shiny button, but let's get rid of all that other extra stuff, like you know, developing kits programs and work stuff. It just well, doesn't make 8, it a tiny big butt. Well, Windows 8 hasn't gotten rid of that. It's, it's, Visual Studio 11 is, it, it, it's pretty powerful. And um, I can tell you on the development side, Microsoft's totally uh, on board in many tools um, for, for Metro support. As far as OS X adding things like that are iOS-like, in my developer seeds that I had, it never got in the way of the UI. Um, Will I ever use those, uh, I guess you could call them cluttery type things, but you still have to click on them to, to use them. Mission control, though, being the, the, the real sore thing because it's a forced situation. Also, the, the, the added visual uh, visual effects. Uh, yeah, I, I, I am really wondering if somebody isn't going to write an app for OS X to restore spaces. Well, maybe that's something I can do when I get time, I don't but, uh, yeah. yeah, a bit. You could sell that for twenty bucks a piece, and every productive OS ten user would buy it. So, uh, would you like to fund our network by fixing OS ten? <laughs> well, I think everybody was over bitching about uh, mission control because uh, it was just a redesign. It was just them putting spaces and what else was it? No, 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 this, this, that's, the, do you use Linux? Oh, okay, so it was a program to take over your entire desktop and control your mind. No, 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 this, this, do you use Linux? Yeah. Uh, okay, do you ever use um, uh, Expo, where like you have the multiple desktops or screens? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, by default you have four of them, two by two, but you can add as many as you want. Okay, imagine all of those are organized on a one by whatever array, and that's the only way they're organized. So if you have eight, it's one by eight. If you have sixteen, it's one by sixteen, and you have to scroll through them. That's what Mission Control did to that feature. So you either so people who were using the full 16 that OS 10 allowed. I mean, I have 49 here, a seven by seven, but I, I think Apple limited you to 16. But so imagine, would you rather have 16 in four by four or in one by 16? Well, I liked it better when it was like the whole you know rolls going down. And you can have like. Absolutely. Oh, no, I use all 16. Yeah. I like, I use all 47 of mine on my Linux box here. And that that's the real thing people are bitching about with Mission Control. Because really, if you get much more than five, it, you it, they don't fit in that one by UI. Well, way. that complaint makes sense. It's just the other complaint against Mission Control was everybody's like, I mean, they were saying stupid stuff like, uh, Mission Control sending out my private information. Oh, I never heard about that. I was just complaining about the UI change. I, I think it was before Apple uh, released uh, released their new line. They were saying this because when they heard Mission Control, they thought, "Oh, this is the central app for the entire." Desktop. The, what, what, the, the way the way Apple introduced it at the keynotes, you were led to the impression that it was going to be like integrated with the marketplace, and yeah, it was going to be a privacy breach. But that isn't what it actually does. In fact, it did, it, it did something completely different. Yeah. And everybody else was wrong. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just never knew about that. All right, 
Google them. Oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, let's skip over those uh, beta yeah, tablets. Uh, you, no, I don't care about them. Google them. Uh, what, 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 where do you want to start? I just pause the podcast and, and break so we don't lose the visual. And then I pause. I didn't let them hear. This is not being recorded on the podcast. Right what, now. Uh, uh, okay, hold on. Let me put a click in. Let me not 